welcome to NPTEL, myself Jayanto Das from Department of Metallurgical and Materials Engineering, IIT Kharagpur. I will be teaching you advanced materials and processes. Since last classes, we have discussed many different aspects of glassy and amorphous alloys or materials and today we will go into a little bit deep inside of the glass forming ability. Let us say we may start with the composition and we found that there is a possibility for a particular cooling rate to obtain a glass during solidification. And now how we can assess different alloys in terms of their ease of glass formation. And today we are going to discuss those issues in terms of glass forming ability. It is a very uh, well known fact that many of these glasses are formed by choosing the composition by trial and error. So, it is very hard to predict that we can design a composition and the glass will be easy to form in those composition. And therefore, people had to, 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 to go for trial and error mix different elements with different composition atomic percent or weight percent and then solidify it at different cooling rate and try to look at what is the microstructure evolved. And in this way people find out many different composition since 1993 when the first bulk metallic glass bulk here means basically greater than 2 millimeter in any of the dimension uh, which was discovered in a vitraloy system uh, by uh, Professor Johnson at Caltech. Therefore, since so many different glass forming alloy composition has been developed in different different alloy system, we really need a unified approach uh, to characterize this glassy alloy uh, in order to understand the ease of glass formation. And this is a very very important aspect to understand the glass forming ability of an alloy. And therefore, we need to go a little bit step by step and let us see how we do we understand this matter. In earlier classes, we have talked about this time temperature uh, transformation diagram and which is also a, a important diagram for glass forming alloy. In the left hand side, you can see here I have plotted schematically a temperature versus time, time is shown in a log scale. So, let us say I may have taken or chosen an alloy and this alloy has a has a TTT diagram like this C type of curve. And when we cool it okay, and since if the under cooling is very high then nucleation rate is very high. Okay. So, therefore, the nose of the top part of the TTT curve will uh, have a such a shape. So, lower under cooling will give you larger incubation period for nucleation whereas, whereas a larger under cooling will give you more number of nucleation in the melt. And now, below certain temperature which is usually the nose of a TTT below here the, the diffusion uh, become sluggish and therefore, since the atom need to make a cluster uh, to make a nuclei and that, uh, that basically decreases. So, diffusion in the melt also decreases okay? and therefore, we again get a larger incubation time. So, this is the explanation why the shape is like a C. Okay? Now, um, once again this is the liquidus temperature and let us say this is a glass transition temperature. And um, this is the region when we will get a super cool liquid. Usually when the cooling rate is greater than 10 to the power 6 Kelvin uh, per second, we call it as a rapid solidification. Okay? So, the cooling rate is very, very high. Now, if we can apply or adopt such rapid solidification and bypass the nose of the TTT curve 
then instead of 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 going towards this crystalline region okay so we can bypass this and we can uh, transform a supercool liquid into a glass however if we cool it slower than the cooling rate adopted for rapid solidification then we will enter into the the crystalline region and definitely there is no chance to get any glass at all okay in such a situation so if this is the general understanding of uh, the solidification process from liquid to crystallization and bypassing liquid to crystallization to in order to form a glass okay so in that case definitely we have to think about the cooling rate adopted in order to bypass this nose of the ttt curve and that is very much important and so we try to understand that even if we cool more faster we will get a glass a little bit slower we will get a glass again a little bit slower we will get a glass and if we somehow just bypass the nose of the ttt curve we will also get a glass and but you can see the time required for this solidification is different than this solidification time okay so this is case 1 this is let's say case 2 in case 2 the cooling rate is much slower than 1 but in both case it is possible to get the glass so we can think about a critical cooling rate in case 2 let's say a critical cooling rate in order to obtain glass because a slower cooling rate than the critical cooling rate will definitely encounter these nose of the ttt curve and some part some part of the melt will transform into crystal sure surely okay so therefore the idea of critical cooling rate actually comes and now here uh, scientists tried to explain that tl minus tn divided by tn here t is the time and n basically means the nose so the window for this particular time tn and this is the temperature n is important so small tn stands for the time and capital tn st stands for the temperature of the of the nose so if this difference actually become lower and lower and the time if this become higher and higher okay in that case the critical cooling rate required will be less and then we can tell that yes this is a composition which uh, is easily uh, uh, glass formable okay so uh, this is a good idea and now then there are some other uh, empirical relation that this is the second relation that i am showing you that is rc is equal to 10 by d square here d is the centimeter let's assume i have taken a a, a composition and uh, this composition uh, i find out the critical diameter let's say uh, 2 millimeter okay i have taken another composition where it is 10 millimeter we can form glass if we make 11 millimeter diameter then there is no possibility to make a glass let us assume at this moment and then if we uh, put this 10 here then we can estimate the 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 value of the rc okay and this rc the critical cooling rate which has a lower value tells that a glass is easily formable okay very similar way here is also ln r is equal to a and b are the constant tl minus t x c x c is basically stands for the onset of the solidification so this three uh, relation uh, explain that a lower value of r c define the ease of the glass formation and which is uh, expected so let's say if i have to develop a 
a glass, easy glass forming alloys. So, I have to go for a lower RC, then I can make much bigger and bigger uh, glasses. Now, on the other hand, the question may come to our mind that how we are going to, to explain the increase of the, the glass forming ability. Yes, and that is why people have tried to make different alloy composition or changing little composition so that we can make a larger diameter or we can cast a larger diameter. And how to do that? Yes, there is a good option that is called alloy addition. So, let us say I have three element in a glass forming composition and I am adding another fourth element into that composition and in this way what we are trying? We are moving this CCT or TTT curve to the right hand side actually. So, so from let us say composition 1 and composition 2. So, com in case of composition 2, there is a shift of this nose of the TTT curve. Uh, and in that case actually much slower cooling rate we can get a glass. And therefore, the glass forming ability of glass 2 is more than glass 1. And this is what we learn by alloy addition or we can do by alloy addition. So, uh, theoretically the more and more shift or more and more incubation time of crystallization will allow you to form a glass more and more easily, because our intention is to bypass the crystallization or avoid crystallization. So, that we can reach to T g and there will be a phase transformation in the supercool liquid in order to transform a undercool liquid into a glass. So, this is what we learn from here. Now, let us have a look at uh, different alloy system and different alloy composition. Uh, I just made a summary to show you uh, what are their critical cooling rate values, because there we can learn which one is much easy to form a glass and which one is more difficult to form a glass. Since I told you that rapid solidification processing means like melt spinning. So, where there is a liquid which is injected on a copper wheel and the wheel is rotated at a very, very high speed. And then we can make a 60 micrometer or 100 micrometer thin film out of these melt span which are called as a ribbon and those ribbon uh, we can really achieve very, very high cooling rate and we can form a glass. And therefore, here you can see that there are some glasses which has uh, a RC or critical cooling rate value of 10 to the power 7. And this is a very, very famous glass forming composition called as MET glass, because it is a soft magnetic glass which is used in many, uh, many uh, transformer core with zero core loss, because there is no hysteresis almost like that. And here also some gold germanium glass. So, here also the cooling rate required is very, very high. So, we can directly say by looking at the RC value that these are poor glass forming alloys or the glass forming ability of this alloy is low. Now, let us have a look at let us say a magnesium based uh, uh, glass forming composition. Yes, here it is 1. So, compare to a met glass, this is a better glass forming alloy. So, this one is better. Okay. And now, let us go to this uh, uh, quinary alloy. Here, magnesium, copper, silver, palladium and gadolinium is there. And here, some extra alloy addition has been made in order to form the glass at a lower cooling rate, because the cooling rate required is 0 0.7, which is lower or slower than 1. Now, let us have a look at the right hand side. This is very much interesting. Here, mostly nickel niobium or nickel palladium phosphorus. So, if somebody asks me, then I will definitely say that nickel niobium is a better glass forming alloy than the nickel palladium, because here the value is much higher. I need much higher cooling rate to bypass the crystallization. Now, there is another interesting uh, thing what we can do during glass uh, glass formation that we can use some flux, because in order to avoid crystallization 
the melt should be more and more pure. So, here purity means there will be no dissolved glasses, there will be no oxygen content. Okay. So, in that case we can avoid inhomogeneous nucleation and to, to avoid inhomogeneous nucleation the liquid melt should be more pure and therefore, fluxing technique uh, is a good idea or a good approach to adopt and therefore, even you can see that without fluxing here you need 1.58 Kelvin per second cooling rate whereas, with flux treatment we need 0 0.1. So, we learned that this is a better uh, even though the compositions are same. Okay. So, by using flux treatment we can improve the glass forming ability. So, how we can improve glass forming ability if somebody asks you then there is a alloy addition by which we can shift the nose of the TTT curve also we can improve the glass forming ability by fluxing technique. Now, let us have a look with some palladium silicon and here with flux treatment the cooling rate is much slower. So, we improve again. Now, if you compare this the palladium based uh, glasses the, the one here with this one. Let us see and compare here. So, here also palladium copper nickel phosphorus here palladium silicon. So, by a quinary system by adding some multiple element we have enhanced the glass forming ability compared to palladium silicon binary alloy. So, you can see that the adding another two element improve the glass forming ability. However, this may not be uh, true in all cases what I want to mean that you can keep on adding different element and you will make a better glass it is not like that there are many different calculation one should do and also there are many different trials and error one has to look at those things we will discuss in detail. So, let us have a look at uh, different different alloy system and the maximum diameter has been reported so far. So, in the x axis I have plotted here the base metal and here this is the maximum diameter. So, as the cooling rate is important if somebody tell you or, or proves that 10 millimeter diameter uh, has been made as a fully glass. Okay. So, the 10 millimeter diameter that composition is better than 1 millimeter diameter. So, glass forming ability of 10 millimeter diameter uh, rod forming composition is better and therefore, the maximum diameter is also a measure of a good glass forming ability. Now, uh, this is reported in 1997 something like 7 centimeter. Okay. So, this is a palladium based glass. So, palladium based glasses ha shows a better uh, glass forming ability than the gold. Okay. So, these are zirconium based alloys like vitre alloy. Okay. So, the maximum diameter so far it has been made something like 5 centimeter. Okay. So, you can have a look at different different base alloying element and how the maximum diameter is reported at what time and day by day this data is updated and one can look at different review literature and so on. Now, again uh, to understand this glass forming ability we have discussed about the critical cooling rate and maximum diameter. However, by looking at the phase diagram we can also learn something. It is told that a deeper the eutectic phase diagram will enhance your glass forming ability. Because what we need to deal with basically the liquidus temperature in case of eutectic alloy the liquidus temperature is low okay, and if the glass transition temperature is sufficiently high then we can also make a composition and transform it to a liquid transform to a glass. Like here uh, please have a look this is a deeper eutectic and this is a shallower eutectic. How we will prove that? Okay, these are the melting uh, temperature of two different element let us say A and B and here is also A and B. However, the eutectic temperature compared to their individual melting temperature is, is, is relatively high. Okay. So, the ratio of this one and the eutectic temperature is high here. Okay. 
and so the the liquidus temperature very sharply falls and here it is less sharply fall okay so in that case the deeper eutectic people find out that there are more easier to form the glass the reason is here because there is a parameter uh, scientists have told that is reduced glass transition temperature what is reduced glass transition temperature which is defined by trg is equal to t glass transition temperature temperature divided by the liquidus temperature should be always greater than 0.667 okay so if you can get a glass or if you simply make a glass and measure its glass transition temperature and liquidus temperature and make a ratio you can say a, a good glass forming will always have a greater than 0.67 value okay that it says now if we have a look at this deeper eutectic this also explain how this reduced glass transition help in estimating the glass forming ability yes here this is the liquidus temperature and this is the 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 the, the glass transition temperature so the reduced glass transition temperature increases by taking the ratio so if you go from this composition to the right hand side you see the glass forming ability in terms of reduced glass transition temperature increases whereas in this case since it is not a deeper eutectic so if you start from this composition and go towards here means you make different different composition and measure its liquidus temperature and measure its glass transition temperature and make the ratio and then you will see that trg is not increasing too much and therefore we learn that a deeper eutectic is always beneficial uh, in a phase diagram in order to give you a better glass forming composition now let us have a look at different uh, glass forming ability and reduced glass transition temperature of different system so far reported so the definition of reduced glass transition temperature is here and you see these are calcium and some copper based glasses and where these values are 0 0.69 0 0.60 0 0.64 0 0.62 64 and so on where some lanthanum based alloys shows little bit higher and these composition are much poor which is not really very good whereas nickel niobium is little bit better or palladium which is a very very good glass former has a value which is greater than 0 0.67 so out of this whole list we can easily say that palladium based these composition are better glass formers and that we have already looked in the plot that we can make a much bigger size in terms of glass forming ability now there are other parameters which has been explained by uh, zp lu and he proposed that we can again uh, consider uh, this gamma parameter uh, and it will uh, help to explain the glass forming ability okay how we do that this gamma he introduced a parameter which is the ratio of tx by tg and tl now we need to look at what is tg yes if we see the dsc response of a glass the, the onset of glass transition is the tg okay and here this is the onset of crystallization which is called as tx and here it formed the liquid here it is liquid and this is basically crystal and here this is called as a tx so this is the temperature uh, tl so this is the liquidus temperature okay so now we simply see a response the dsc response of a glass and then we simply take this ratio of tx by tg plus tl and now we can make a higher value of of gamma by increasing the tx and by decreasing the tg plus tl okay tg plus tl okay and maybe initially it may looks a little bit complicated but you realize that the lower the tl 
will be beneficial for a better glass former there is no doubt or higher the T x will have a beneficial effect on ease of the glass forming ability. And let us have a look how we explain this feature using a TTT diagram. So, here in the right hand side I show you a TTT diagram with temperature versus time. So, here let us say this is alloy 2 and this one is the alloy 1. Okay. Now, uh, when we start with the liquid melt and under cool it and then super cool it, then we may get a glass. Let us say the case is like this. Okay. So, here we already get a glass. We start with this glass and then put it inside a differential scanning calorimeter. Then we are heating it. So, during heating means we are going from this side, we are heating it. So, first we will encounter this phase transition that is called T g here. This we will first encounter. Okay. And now what we will see? We will again encounter here the we will touch the TTT curve and crystallization will begin and after some time it will be fully crystallized which is happened here okay. and here the transformation finish completed and here it is basically crystal. Okay. And then we will go further and then we will ultimately reach to T L. Okay. So, here we already reached to T L okay. and this is T x and this is T g. So, now you understand how the events goes on. Okay. Now, let us uh, think about only alloy 2 and try to explain uh, the gamma parameter here. So, what we are telling that T x should be should be higher and higher. Yes, that is a good idea. So, it means uh, if we have alloy 1, then alloy 1 where the TTT curve is shifted to right hand side, then we will have a higher T x 1 value and this will increase the gamma parameter. Yes, that we can also prove using the TTT curve because the nose of the TTT curve has been shifted from here to here. Now, let us have a look at what is this half of T g plus T l value. So, half of this T g plus T l value will give you the T l here and this is T g. So, half means basically the position of the, the nose of the T t curve and which need to be lower and lower. So, T l should come down. So, T l should come down this is the T l should come down and therefore, half of the T g plus T l will also come down. So, here basically it says that we need a higher value of T x and lower value of T g plus T l. And therefore, this gamma parameter actually explained that uh, the glass forming ability has two different aspect. The first one is the liquid phase stability. So, liquid phase stability means this is the supercool liquid stage or during heating this is the supercool uh, liquid stage. Okay. So, the difference between T x minus T g. So, here is the T g. Okay. So, delta T x we call it. So, this stability we need higher. So, stability at the equilibrium state means basically T l should go down and T g should also go down and therefore, this value will go down which will uh, increase the gamma value. So, stability of the undercool liquid state will give you also the same. So, this is the parameter where we get. On the other hand, we need a high resistance to crystallization and uh, during heating. So, how we get that? Yes, the resistance is here. So, this is the resistance upon heating and therefore, we need a higher value of T x. So, this is the higher value of T x than T x 2. So, T x 1 is better than T x 2 
and therefore, the TTT position along the time axis will increase which will increase the gamma parameter and this is the beneficial effect of this uh, gamma parameter to explain the ease of glass formation. And therefore, people had a look at uh, the, the critical cooling rate and casting thickness and so on and they have plotted uh, the gamma parameter in this way and they have a look at what is the critical cooling rate or casting thickness one can achieve. You can see these are the real glass forming composition, their gamma values are shown here and their cooling rate is shown here or the casting thickness is shown here. You can see that almost a value of greater than 3.5 we can form bulk metallic glass, a bulk means basically greater than greater than 2 mm in thickness. Okay. So, here these are rapidly solidified glass which are like ribbon which are conventional metallic glasses. So, the casting thickness also increases as the gamma parameter value increases and therefore, we understood that gamma parameter good value in order to explain the glass forming ability. In the next classes, we will continue the discussion on the glass forming ability. Thank you.